There is no more hope for Japan if it has to kill such a skillful pilot like myself. I can hit an aircraft carrier with a 1,102 pound bomb and return alive without having to make a suicidal plunge. If it is an order, I will go. But I am not going to die for the Emperor or for Imperial Japan. I am going for my beloved life. If Japan loses, she might be raped by Americans. I am dying for someone I love most, to protect her. These are the words of Yukio Seki when a reporter asked him about being chosen to become one of the first kamikaze pilots. He had married his wife, who he had loved dearly just six months earlier. His plane is thought to have hit the USS St. Lo. In this picture, Yukio Seki and 150 US sailors perished. It is easy to think of the Japanese in World War II as robotic, emperor-loving fanatics. While this is true to some extent, not all was black and white, just as we saw with Yuki. In fact, when the kamikaze program was first introduced by Vice Navy Admiral Onishi Takajiro, he asked the professional army for volunteers. A grand total of zero pilots volunteered. As such, Takajiro called on young cadets and the brightest university students to sacrifice their lives for the Emperor. While many were willing to die to protect their families in Japan, almost none mentioned protecting the Emperor or the Imperial ambitions of the government as reasons for their sacrifice. Pictured here is the 72nd Shinobu Squadron. The oldest pilot in this picture is 19 years old, the youngest, 17. Yukio Araki, the boy holding the puppy, was the youngest known kamikaze pilot to die in the war. We still have many of the diaries and lost letters of these kamikaze pilots. They are absolutely heartbreaking. This is exactly what I'll be talking about today in this video. Disclaimer, this is not to paint Japan as a victim. The war crimes committed by the Japanese, from the high command to the individual soldier, are undeniable. However, to truly understand history, it is important to remember that we are talking about human beings, just like you and I. The feelings they express are something that we today can relate to. Now, I want you to close your eyes and imagine in your head what a room full of young men destined to die the next day looks like. Kasuga Tekio was in charge of the day-to-day -day activities of the kamikaze pilots and describes this exact scene. At the hall where their farewell parties were held, the young student officers drank cold sake the night before their flight. Some gulped the sake down in one swallow, others kept gulping down a large amount. The whole place degenerated to the chaos. Some broke hanging light bulbs with their swords, some lifted chairs to break the windows and tore white tablecloths. A mixture of military songs and curses filled the air. While some shouted in rage, others cried aloud. It was the last night of their life. They thought of their parents, their faces and images, lovers' faces and their smiles. A sad farewell to their fiancés. All went through their minds like a running horse lantern. Although they were supposedly ready to sacrifice their precious youth the next morning, for Imperial Japan and for the Emperor, they were torn beyond what words can express. Some putting their heads on the table, some writing their wills, some folding their hands in meditation, some leaving the hall, and some dancing in frenzy while breaking flower vases. They all took off with a rising sun headband the next morning. As you can see, the pilots felt a wide range of emotions, but one seems to be present in most cases, despair. Hayashi Tado, a graduate of the Imperial University of Kyoto, would write in his diary, I do not want to die. I want to live. No, I don't want to die. I feel lonely. I don't know why I feel so lonely. Being isolated? Feeling the poverty of the self? Homesick? Hayashi would die at the age of 24 after his plane was shot down. Perhaps the most tragic was the fate of his mother. After learning of her son's death, she began to quote unquote visibly wither and die the next year out of grief. What nearly brought me to tears was the writings of the families, especially the mothers. They were all torn beyond words, especially after Japan lost the war. They all felt that the sacrifice of their sons was for nothing. One mother wrote, how sad it is to be born in the era when the word loyalty governs all. You left your mother behind and went to the war, believing that is the way to save the 100 million Japanese. Knowing that crying is against my son's wish, 
It is unbearably lonely not to cry. Be at peace, my children. I eagerly go to heaven where my husband and my son are waiting. Many of these pilots had to tie up loose ends with their family. They had to say their last words. Anzawa Toshio, a student from Chuo University, wrote to his wife, who he had just married. Find happiness, Chieko. Being able to love another person is the utmost happiness. My future will be fulfilled by my wish for your happiness, which is the most honorable of all my feelings. Anzawa died in his attack at the age of 23. Due to the secrecy of his mission, he was not able to see his beloved wife one last time. Sasaki Hachiro, a student from the University of Tokyo, had a strained relationship with his father. However, when his father came down with tuberculosis, he wrote his last letter to him. Although I have not taken care of you at all, tomorrow I will die for Japan. Although I have never said in words, since this is the last opportunity, let me say that I love you. Sasaki died in submission at the age of 22. Perhaps the best example I found of the fertility and tragicness of the kamikaze operation was the fate of Wanda Minoru. Wada volunteered to become a kamikaze pilot for a Kaiten submarine torpedo, depicted here. The pilot would sit inside the torpedo and direct it towards its target. When the day of his mission came about, his torpedo malfunctioned and sank to the bottom of the ocean. He gradually suffocated over the course of 10 hours, a day before the signing of the Potsdam Declaration. He was only 23 years old. Something I want to say before I continue is that many writings and letters were censored by the Japanese government during and after the war. Shinata Masamichi says the following, I knew the kamikaze pilots would die like dogs. When I was selected to be one of the 36 kamikaze pilots out of the 200 that were trained, I sank into the depths of despair. I was told to write my will so that I can display it at the exhibition hall for education. Of course, we could not say what we really thought and felt, so we had to lie. It was taboo to express our true thoughts. The kamikaze operation was filled with thousands of individual stories just like these. Most we will never know. Now that we established the human aspect of these young men, it is also important to note that they held a wide range of world beliefs. For example, there is the case of Hayashi Ichizo, who was a Christian. Of course, under Christianity, suicide is a sin. So how can you justify becoming a kamikaze pilot? Ichizo did not see his mission as a suicide. Rather, he saw it as an alternative way of protecting his country and most importantly, his family. As mentioned before, many of these pilots were top students, the cream of the crop. They could speak multiple languages. In fact, it was difficult for the families to translate the diaries after their deaths because they were written in either French or German. Their reading list will put academics today to shame. They write a wide range of literature, ranging from Greek philosophers, Enlightenment thinkers, Hitler's Mein Kampf, and the writings of Lenin. Many were surprisingly socialists and communists. The Imperial Japanese government hated communism, and even the decadent West was seen as favorable to the Soviets. Sasaki Hachiro, a socialist himself, writes, There is some sign of a new ethos for a new era. However, even though the material foundation for the new era is already being built, we cannot help but notice the legacy of old capitalism. If the power of old capitalism is something we cannot get rid of easily, but if it could be crushed by defeat and war, we are turning the disaster into a fortunate event. We are now searching for something like a phoenix, which rises out the ashes. What Sasaki is saying is that Japan's defeat could be beneficial as a socialist utopia could arise. Having this opinion in Imperial Japan would land you in front of a firing squad. It also dispels the myth that all these pilots were brainwashed fanatics who would die for the emperor under any circumstance. History is never black and white. At the end of the day, we are all people. However, some of us are unlucky and get caught in the gears of history.